Hallelujah. Amen. Last week, we started speaking on the rollout of divine purpose. Today, we are continuing with same. And in the first lesson, we mentioned that there are three key areas that we are going to look under this subject. Number one, the place of prophecy in the rollout of divine purpose. Number two, the place of watchmen in the rollout of divine purpose. And number three, how we can participate in divine purpose. Last week we ended on the note that there is a strong prophetic voice that is speaking. And we need a prophetic inclination to be able to flow along with the prophetic word. Remember the prophetic word is a word in season and it doesn't return to God void. It accomplishes that which God sent Today our focus is the place of watchmen in the rollout of divine purpose. And our anchor scripture in this study is Isaiah chapter 62. We considered verse 1 to 5 last week. And we saw the operation of the prophetic voice. And the rearrangement it does in the church. One thing the prophetic voice does. Which we want to look at today. Is that it begins to raise watchmen. And so we want to look at verse 6 of Isaiah chapter 62. The Bible says. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem. We shall never hold their peace day or night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. Verse 7. And give him no rest. Until he, God, establishes. Until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. To, to begin with, we want to ask who are watchmen. Traditional watchmen were like God, whose job was to stand and keep watch. Whilst others had the liberty to do anything of their choice. They had no choice but to stand and watch. Watchmen did not live an ordinary life. People could lie down and sleep. People could sit down comfortably. But as for the watchman, his responsibility was to stand and watch. As a watchman, you had no right 
to lie down or to sit. When we talk about the posture of standing and watching, it gives us an idea that the watchmen were disciplined to alertness and vigilance. A watchman must always be alert. Ready to move. A watchman must be vigilant. Always observing. And to see the wrong things that are happening. Hallelujah. Amen. In Bible times, watchmen were mostly stationed in watchtowers. Ampara. These watchtowers were often positioned on the city walls. And so whenever they built their cities, they built a tower that rose higher than the wall. And the watchman stayed in there standing within a very small area so that they can have a very good view of what was happening. Hallelujah. Amen. The watchtowers formed a part of the city's protection system. And so they built very solid walls which they could place uh, these towers on. And the tower, we are saying, was part of the protection system of the city. Because they, because they lived in a time of so many wars. wars. And they always got themselves ready for the enemies. The world towers provided two things. No. Number one, they provided surveillance. And so as a result of the watchtower, the watchman could see very far. And number two, it provided information for city authorities. Oh, hallelujah. It is great to be a watchman. Very often in many societies, the watchmen are seen as the downgraded. But interestingly, by their oppression, they carried information that determined the security of the great ones. It is a privilege when God calls you to be a watchman. Because by virtue of your role, and the information you are privy to you are able to save cities and nations you are able to save the communities that God puts under your control this is the privilege that the watchman enjoys and so even though they belittle themselves. But the information they carried kept nations secure. Mm. 
their information kept nations to secure. In very simple terms, watchmen were responsible for two things that I want to talk about. Number one, watchmen were positioned to see any advances made against their city. They had the power of vision. They had the power of vision. They never put anybody on the watchtower as a watchman who had eyesight, problem with their eyesight. They will test your eyes and be sure that it is good. Even so, the people that God calls to be spiritual watchmen are men that he gives the power of vision. Special sight that sees into the spirit. Number two, there were carriers of the power of discernment. Whenever they saw anything coming, their training. They could distinguish between good and evil. They could interpret what was coming. And for spiritual watchmen as well, God is able to give them a discerning spirit that can be able to see the negative things that are coming and the positive things that are coming. Because they transmit information based on what they see. If they don't see right and interpret right, their communication will not be right. And for that reason, God gives them vision. God gives them discernment so that they can see right, interpret right, and communicate right. May the Lord grant us understanding. The second thing we want to know about watchmen. Watchmen were sources of vital information that alerted city authorities. In these times, when governments are getting confused about the challenges of our world, God wants to train his people to be able to see things arise, interpret things arise, that they will become a voice uh, that the kings uh, and the authorities uh, of nations and communities will listen to. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm. We want to go to verse 6 of Isaiah 62. It says that I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem. I, God, I have set them. Oh, in the wake of the prophetic voice. God begins to carry out some oppressions that begins to position spiritual watchmen on walls. We shall not hold their peace day or night. God begins to talk about their function and their oppression. Watchmen are men of communication. He that make mention of the Lord. Keep no silence. Are you among those who mention the name of the Lord? And God wants to remind you. That he's calling you. At least. At 
at least you'll be the watchman for your home. As part of the rollout of divine purpose. God is raising spiritual watchmen and there are four things I want to say about them. Four things that God is doing in the raising of watchmen. Number one, God stares in man the burden for the protection of the communities they live in. There are some of you who are becoming restless about certain conditions that are prevailing within a certain domain where you operate. Some of you, it is about your workplace. Some of you, it is about your nation. And probably you have not interpreted it aright. But once those stirrings are going on within you, if you can take time and seek the face of God, you will come to understand that God is calling you to some watchman responsibility. Oh, I remember Nehemiah. Far away from Jerusalem. Ah, now only Jerusalem, all men Jerusalem. In captivity. The Bible says. Transcend. He started getting disturbed in his spirit. When he received news of the devastating state of the walls of Jerusalem. Which walls represented the security of the city. The man was instantly burdened. And that was what drove him to do something about Jerusalem. I tell you, anytime you begin to receive that burden, then God is also reminding you that you are an answer to the problem that is burdening you. Some of you, 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 you have a strong burden to pray for your family. God is calling you even to be a watchman so that in your oppression he can roll out his purpose in your family. May the church grant us understanding. The second point I want to roll is that God grants Watch man special grace to see into the spirit and behold the spiritual advances towards the communities they stand for. Some of you have started having some dreams you don't understand. Anytime you have a dream, it's related to a certain group of people. It's related to a nation. It's related to a community. And you don't understand. It is because God is connecting you as a watchman to begin to pray for that situation. It is time to go before God, seek his face, and come to understand the watchman role that he's bringing you into. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All the advances the enemy makes. All the advances that come against your city may come from two sources. From the direction of God. Information coming from the realm of God. Information that is coming from the realm of the enemy. For this reason, God blesses you with 
discernment. And so when you see the devil, you know that is the devil. And when you see God, you know that it is God. And you don't get confused about the situation. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And this is the kind of grace that was on Elisha. As a watchman. He sat in Samaria and could read the things that were taking place in the palace of Syria. As a watchman, God had given him the vision. Because God had called him to protect Israel. And so there was a prophet in Israel who also operated as a watchman. Whenever there is a prophet or a watchman in an area, if the enemy makes any advances, even before they move, God will reveal it. Oh, let the spirit of revelation flow. Let it begin to flow. And when those revelations come, I pray that those of you who are walking in the realm of confusion and cannot tell whether this is from the devil or this is from God, may the spirit of discernment come upon you so that you can interpret it aright as you perform your function as a watchman. The next point I want to make is that God gives watchmen great, uh, gives, gives watchmen a special voice to communicate. Oh, they have a special voice. When they are communicating, they look at you like ordinary men. But their words carry authority. God has made them a voice. You ignore it and you are in trouble. You listen to them and you are safe. Oh, hallelujah. And to, to, uh, I want you to understand that God is making some of you great voices. Hallelujah. Amen. Such people are like the men of Issachar. First Chronicles chapter 12 verse 32 says about them. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had, had an understanding of the times. To know what Israel ought to do. The heads of them were 200. And all their brethren were at their command. They were men who understood the exigencies of the time. And so they had a voice of command. No matter your class, when a watchman begins to speak, the high and mighty will stop and listen. Because they have, you have proven that you are a man whose words cannot be joked with. In the rollout of God's purpose, God is raising watchmen. Also that he will take control of communities. He will take control of cities. He will take control of various environments. So that the purpose of God can be accomplished. The fourth point I want to make. All the other things that we have talked about. They are, most of them are things that God does for the watchman. He gives them vision. 
He gives them the power of communication. These are graces that he releases upon them. But the fourth point we are going to make has to do with an attitude that every watchman must cultivate. Because they are critical to the rollout of the purpose of God. The next is that watchmen have a personal discipline of denying themselves of the pleasures others crave for. By virtue of their work, they don't live a normal life. All the comforts that others enjoy, they cannot enjoy. God takes them through the school of hard knocks and disciplines them. And, and so they are men of character. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm. Amen. Others can sit. Others can lie. And freely move about. Mm. But the watchman stands. And watches. In a restricted location. Hallelujah. They stand in a restricted location. Only where God wants them to stand. They cannot move from that place. I see many people who are trying to delve into the realm of prayer and contacting God uh, to, to be able to have 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 exercised dominion and control over areas. But such men have failed to discipline themselves. And so they cannot prevail the way God wants them to prevail. Remember, the Bible says that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man. Anyone who can be a watchman must stand in the right place. The Bible says that I will that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands. And so if you are going to be a watchman, you need the discipline of holiness. Today there are so many people who pray a lot. But make little or no impact in the spirit. They pray a lot, but they lack direction. Because the self-discipline aspect of the function of the watchman, they are not following. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 4. No man that worried entangled himself with the affairs of this life. The watchman in a sense is a warrior. Because it's a supplier of the intelligence information that will trigger the war. If you say, Oh, you'll be a or didn't someone, I do a Emma. Hallelujah. So, no man that worried entangled himself, you don't tie yourself uh, with civilian pursuits. Why? That he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. Everything that we do must please the Lord. Everything that we do must please the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to go to Isaiah chapter 62 verse 7. Verse 7. 
It says that, and give him no rest. Watchmen do not give God rest. Till he establish. Until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Watchmen, watchmen will not rest. And watchmen will not allow God to rest. Until purpose is done. Until the will of God is done. Spiritual watchmen men are people who want travel persistently in prayer concerning God's purpose. If they get to know that this is the purpose of God, they cannot relent. They will fight on. They will fight on until that purpose has come to pass. Child of God, what is it that you have been praying about? And you realize that God has burdened you about. The scripture says to you in Luke chapter 18 verse 1 I will look at some that I will that men uh, uh, it says that I will that men pray and never faint. And Jesus and he spake a parable unto them to this end. That men always ought to pray. And not to faint. Hallelujah. Amen. There is one ingredient about prayer that the watchman knows about. The watchman knows that sometimes in prayer the physical signs tell you that the solution hasn't come. But in the spirit, you have picked the signal that it is done. And so what do you do? And I see Elijah speaking. He says that in the spirit, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. The signal was so clear in the spirit. But in the physical, there was no sign. The man went his knees seven times. This is persistence in spirit. Persistent in prayer. It is the attitude of the watchman who will make sure that the situation on the earth will conform to the signal he has picked in the spirit. And so till it comes to pass, he continues to pray. This is the watchman. And people of God, if the purpose of God will come, it will be revealed in the spirit. But there must be a man on earth who will say that God let it come to pass. And that man will not pray one or two times and give up. But he will go to the seventh time until everything is done. And the seventh says, I see the, the, a cloud like a fist of a man coming from the sea. And that was all he needed. The physical sign had come. Beloved, wherever there, wherever there are watchmen, who decide not to rest and decide that they will not give God rest. Heavenly purposes become earthly realities. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, praise the name Amen. of the Lord. Amen. Heavenly purpose become earthly realities. The last thing I want to say about watchmen is that they stay in expectation of the manifestation of the purpose of God. Watchmen, 
Watchmen carry the spirit of expectation. Especially those who watch in the night. Because they live an abnormal life. At the time that naturally everybody sleeps. They cannot sleep. They have to stay awake. And while they stay awake, the whole environment they are supposed to be watching over. The light seems off. But still, they look through. And so as any watchman stood there in the night, the condition was not friendly at all. But they disciplined themselves to it. But while they are disciplining themselves, there is one thing they longed for. The coming of the new day. So that they can be free of their duty. And they can say that they have been successful. And so there is great expectation in their heart for the new day. Even so the spiritual watchman must be. There must always be a strong longing for the manifestation of the new day. That, that which God has promised. Watchmen are men who lay hold on the promises of God. And so prophet Habakkuk says, Habakkuk chapter 2, from verse 1, it says that I will stand upon my watch. As for me, I will stand. I will not sit. I will not relax. It is time for watchmen to stand and set me upon my tower. It says that I have a tower. And today I want to tell somebody that you have a tower. And be set in your tower. Don't leave your tower. That tower belongs to you. Because from that tower, you see the blessings of God that are coming. You see the enemy's attack. And watch and see. Be a man who is alert. To see what he will say unto me. He says that I'm in expectation. I want to see what the Lord will say. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. Verse 2. It says that, and the Lord answered and said, Write the vision. Anybody, anybody who stands uh, in his watcher, uh, begins to see the vision of God. Such men have the record of the vision of God. These are men who make a difference in our world. And he says that make it plain on tablets. That he may run that read it. You do not just only record. But you make it plain. Watchmen are those who make things so plain to people so that they begin to move for God. The purpose of God, the agenda of God is delaying as far as your family is concerned, as far as your community is concerned because you have not arisen even to document and make it plain for people to begin to run. 
Yakupon Timu Boy for a Bushaho, or Yakupon Timu Boy for my home as Chin Eche Eche Efri Sen, or Yakupon by one sorry, Emma Empire Cra, Emma Wunya Sani to us at this one, no one to Timmy, Emma Linda D, Sene Bea, a yes Sani pay a bit me. In the spirit, I see a lot of people who are on their marks. Who are ready to run? But they are waiting for some instruction from you. A clear instruction that triggers them from within. Today, may you arise as a child of God. Arise as a watchman. Arise. Sorry. And because many to run. As a result of the things that you make plain. Verse 3. It says that for the vision is yet for an appointed time. Everything that God reveals is for an appointed time. <laughs> But at the end, it shall, it shall speak. If as a watchman, what you receive from God, hey, it's actually from God, then it will speak. And not lie. Though it tarries, it seems like it's not coming. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. As a watchman, wait for it. So I went for train. Because it will surely come. If you say ampara ampara and it will not tarry. Though it tarries, it will not tarry. In the human language, it is delaying. But as far as God's timing is concerned, it's not delayed. So it tells you, though it tarries, it will not tarry. Though it seems like it's delaying, it will manifest in due season. And so I say, stay in expectation. I say, stay in expectation. And there is a strong voice that is calling for the watchmen to arise. Don't take for granted any call unto prayer. Because it is part of God's agenda. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord touch your life. May the Lord awaken the spirit of the watchman. In your heart. Wherever you are, let a spirit of restlessness come upon you. That you will rise up and take up your responsibility. As a watchman for the rollout of the purpose of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen.